Kevin and Sam Sorbo, welcome to Washington Times Higher Ground. Lots to dig into here today. You have a new film, Miracle in East Texas, that is going to be coming out. Uh, Kevin, tell us a little bit about the impetus for this film. Uh, the impetus is just a wonderful script from a dear, dear friend, Dan Gordon. Um, Dan's an Oscar-nominated writer. He wrote The Hurricane for Denzel Washington, White Earp. Kevin Costner wrote 60 episodes of Highway to Heaven for Michael Landon. Sam worked with them. Sam wrote the, our, our, one of our one of our wonderful scripts, Let There Be Light, and he came and did a little rewrite on it. And uh, it's just a wonderful true story about the largest oil fund in the history of the world. And uh, it's won 10 film festivals, everything from best romantic comedy, the best uh, judge favorite, audience favorite. People just love this movie. It's just a wonderful true story about two con men that would woo widows out of the money on fake oil wells. And they would sell 500% of the shares to clear a dry hole and move on to an, uh, another town. They strike oil. If not giving anything away, it's in the title, Miracle in Texas. But there are other <laughs> miracles that follow. There are other miracles that follow. And Sam's in it. We got John Ratzenberger in it. We got Lou Gossett Jr. We got Tyler Maine. Um, Tyler Maine is a WWF guy, but he's also known as Jason, the guy who wears those leather masks in those horror movies. And uh, <laughs> um, Sabretooth in X-Men. He's a, he's a great, oh, wow. He did a wonderful job. He's this six foot nine, six foot ten dude. He's just awesome. He played the really That's tall awesome. guy. He plays the tall guy. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because I would imagine Sam telling telling a story, a true story, and bringing that into movie form is a little bit different from conjuring up or creating a story. Talk a little bit about that process, what that was like for this, and how it's different from you know telling a fictional story. Well, I personally really glean onto true stories because when you have a true story that features a hero, it's easier to consider that maybe you could emulate that heroic act or the, the heroism of the hero. And so I'm always drawn to true stories. This script was already written. It's a yeah. comedy. It actually had been written for Paul Newman and Robert Redford originally, but they had said they had decided by the time that the script came to them that they weren't going to work together anymore because they'd been so sort of typecast together at that point. And so it just it 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 waited. It waited for us to come and find it. Um, but what I really love about this script is one of the main themes of the script is uh, forgiveness and redemption. Mm -hmm. And when you can tell a story that features that as a theme, I think that's just a gift. Uh, that's that's one of the reasons why we decided to do this movie. The other reason that that it's uh, very important is that it is actually a true story. So you're going to learn a little bit about the history of the United States and its important history. Um, this oil well, this oil reserve goes on to help us win World War II. Yeah. And there's a whole story about that that I only uncovered when we started um, promoting the movie because somebody came and said, Hey, I know, I know about that true story, but I also know what, what happened later. And so a decade later, this is the oil. Uh, Winston Churchill is actually quoted as saying that the allies floated to victory on a sea of East Texas oil. And that's this oil. Pretty amazing. You could have a sequel guys yeah. building already with <laughs> Kevin, you know, when, when you look at this project and you look at the culture and both of you, what I love about the two of you, and we've been friends for a long time now, is that you you do amazing Hollywood projects. You also, you know, you speak into the culture and a project like this, themes like forgiveness, things that truly matter. How how can this movie help people sort of navigate maybe or teach some lessons to help them navigate the crazy culture we're in right now? Can it heal a nation? Possibly. We just got to get the nation to go and fill up these movie theaters. Um, I think that the, just the story behind this, what Sam mentioned earlier, it's got, it's got redemption. It's got hope. It's got uh, laughter, things that I think are missing in so many television shows and movies and certainly in the real news of the world. And we have so much anger and hatred out there and divisiveness. I think movies like this in theaters really bring people together. I still love going to theaters. I still like to be with the big group of people reacting to what's going on, on the screen. And Hollywood puts out, most of the movies they put out are filled with sort of opposite values. This is a movie that Hollywood used to do. If this was 60 years ago, this would have been Catherine Hepburn. There would have been Jimmy Stewart, have been Cary Grant in this movie. It really would have been. So um, and it's, it's just something that um, I, I'm drawn to. I love doing this kind of movies. I get stopped all the time. People say, I want more movies like Soul Server, God's Not Dead, Let There Be Light. This is what people say to me. So it's not Hercules anymore. You know, it's, these are the movies that people 
Um, there's 80 million homes out there. And for whatever reasons, Hollywood, with its woke insanity, just seems to ignore putting out these kind of movies. Yeah, and I'll just throw in here that, you know, with the theme of forgiveness, you know, we live in a cancel culture that I think most of us disagree with. And we feel like, well, what are you going to do? Well, you support films like this that breathe that that anti-cancel culture, right? That this this film breathes the forgiveness culture, which is the a traditional American culture sort of back into society and allows people to get a glimpse of, you know what? Actually, forgiveness is a really good thing. It, it helps both sides of the equation. Um, it's a very valuable lesson. And, uh, and so, and I'll tell you, you know, we've screened it for film festivals and people walk out of the theater just feeling so uplifted, uh, you know, just with the fun, the, the fun elements in the story and also the redemption of the story, the redemptive value of the story. Um, it's a feel good movie. And that's what I we think, like to yeah. do. I, I just showed it to about 300 oil guys in Oklahoma city. And they're, they're, they're what they were worried about. It's just going to show oil in a negative way. They loved the movie because it's pro oil. It's pro capitalism. It's pro country. It's pro freedom. It's pro patriotism. So, uh, of course, there'll be people out there that, oh, I'm not a patriot. I don't like it. <laughs> this, is a, this is a wonderful, wonderful field. Of PG rated. Families can go to it. We got the Dove thing and everything, right, Sam? I mean, we got all those good. Oh, rates. yeah. We just got um, Parents Television and Media Council approval. We got Movie Guides approval and recommendation. And, and, um, and I will say also, because you know that I have a passion for homeschooling, there is a free homeschool resource that coordinates with the film. And you can go to sorbostudios.com to get that. If you happen to have a book club and you think that the book club could, should go see the movie together, there's a discussion guide for the book club because it deals with true events. And so you can learn a little bit about American history and you can talk a little bit about that. And you can talk about the forgiveness element. You can talk a little bit about economics, a little bit about oil and the valuable resource that oil is and how it brought uh, entire communities up out of the depression 1930s America. Um, there's just, there's a lot, let's say there's a lot to dig for in the movie. Uh, <laughs> I like that. I like that pun intended, you know, so Kevin, I, I want to go to you and, and Sam, I want to hear from you on this too, because you were speaking to something a moment ago, Kevin, when it comes to Hollywood, you know, we see again and again and again, these films perform very, very well, right? I mean, you can we can list them off. Obviously, Sound of Freedom was a different kind of film, and there are different kinds of controversies after the movie. But the point is, people showed up. They wanted to see it. They, they loved it. And, you know, why do you think, knowing that obviously these films are going to make money because people love them and, and want them, Hollywood is so remiss to provide these sorts of opportunities for viewers. Uh, great question. And I wish I had an answer for it because it's crazy. I think the, I think the power of fear is an amazing thing. And Hollywood and the mainstream media and television and movies for the last 20, 30 years has slowly built upon this. And I think people are afraid to come out of that closet, so to speak. I wasn't afraid to come out of the conservative closet or the Christian closet. And I never have been. So it's weird to me that with all this success, like you just mentioned, Starting with, you know, God's not dead and, and, and let there be light. And, uh, you know, uh, I can only imagine. I mean, over how many how many movies have to be made to prove Hollywood that's an audience out there? When Let There Be Light came out, we opened number number two per screen average against a $300 million Thor Ragnarok movie. I get a call from Netflix saying, we want to open an inspirational division with you. Well, I had four meetings with them over three months and ultimately nothing happened. And I don't understand. I mean, there's I think I think half the people in that room probably wanted to do it. But I think there's there's a fear in there that they're just afraid to agree that, you know, there's a lot of homes out there that want this kind of product. And I I, I just don't know. I, I think that, you know, uh, there's a lot of evil. Yeah, in the world. I'm gonna, Go ahead. I'm going to jump in here because um, I think it's too easy to say I don't understand. And in fact, uh, every film is a faith based movie. And they have a different faith. Yeah. And so they're not going to make a f movie that supports a faith that they don't have. They don't have that faith. They have a different faith. And I think that we've gone on long enough thinking that the two faiths are compatible, that a non-faith is the same as having faith. It's just the lack of faith. That's not what it is. It's there's this faith and then there's that faith and they are competing faiths. There's the forgiveness faith, 
And there's the anti-forgiveness cancel culture faith. And that's the faith that has taken over in Hollywood today. Mm -hmm. And it is an anti-forgiveness faith. So they will not make movies that support a faith that they don't believe. And and to, to Kevin's point, there are a lot of people in Hollywood who have faith, but they're too timid and they're too shy to speak up. And so they become irrelevant, sadly. They become irrelevant. They become like the nice Germans who weren't Nazis, but didn't do anything to prevent the Nazis. And unfortunately, they're irrelevant to the discussion. They're just baggage. Because if you do nothing in the face of evil, you are evil. Well, and we've seen again and again and again, Hollywood very literally in the media transforming the way people think about all sorts of issues, right? And that's why this is such an important endeavor, what you guys are doing, creating these films, creating these projects. You know, Kevin, I want to hear from both of you again on this before we go, but Kevin, what keeps you guys going? What motivates you to keep making projects like Miracle in East Texas? Well, I still have a passion for uh, creating movies. I, I love the industry, fell in love with it when I was just 11 years old. When Hollywood sort of showed me a different door, Sam and I formed Sorbo Studios. And I just love being part of the process. I love the creative process on the set. I love the, I love the, the reading of scripts and breaking them down and talking with people that hair people, camera people, lighting people and wardrobe. I, mean, I love the whole process and I haven't still lost that excitement for it. And I'm going to keep on doing it. Clint Eastwood's my hero. I'm going to be still directing movies and being in movies when I'm in my 90s. So I'm going to keep plugging away. And I got to throw back in there again to find out everything about this movie and everything Sorbo, sorbostudios.com. You can go right now, click, put, click the Miracle in East Texas link there, put in your zip code. It shows you where the theater is near you. And we need to fill these theaters up because as you know, with Fathom, you only get two days. But at least we get independent movies out there for a while. But we want this movie to do what God's Not Dead did and just blow up and keep on showing for weeks and weeks. And Sam, what about you? What's your motivator in all of this? Kevin is my motivator in all this. <laughs> I, you know, I like I like messaging into the culture. I think that it's uh, I think that it's worthwhile. It's a worthwhile endeavor, and I love to support what he does. I love to be um, to just be the support beneath his creativity because he's he's intensely creative and very talented, and it's just a pleasure to to be able to help that along and, and, um, and support it. And so, yeah, uh, you know, go to Sorbo studios. What's fun about this because it's a fathom event. And this is like the new way to go see theaters is you can order your tickets online beforehand, which we encourage you to do because there are theaters that are now selling out. Thankfully, that's good news. Um, but we do want everybody to get a chance to see the movie. So go order your tickets now, screenshot your tickets purchase, which will show your theater and the time that you're that you're seeing the movie and even your seats and send it, just text it to all your friends. You don't even have to say anything. You just text them. These are the tickets that you bought. They can then go online to the same theater, the same showing and order tickets for themselves. And then you'll have a, a night at the theater with your friends. You go out afterwards, maybe you meet up a little beforehand, maybe. And it's, um, it's just a lot of fun. I've done it a couple of times myself. And so I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. Oh, well, I love that. And you can get the homeschool resource. Um, you can get the discussion guide for uh, your book club. Uh, you can get all of these things. They are free on the website. The, spoiler alert, they, you know, if you read them beforehand, then you'll kind of know the end of the movie. So you might not want to open them beforehand, but you can go get them, download them for free. And um, that's my pleasure. I, I really want families to get a chance to experience a little bit of what home education can be because it's not nearly as hard as you think. And it's so much more rewarding than you ever dreamed. And one I more thing. <laughs> Go for it. Um, I do a lot of comic cons through the years because of Hercules and Andromeda. Well, a lot of the times I go, these people want my photos from God's not dead or, or, or whatever, whatever it may be. So I'm doing a, a faith-based convention in Seaverville, Tennessee, May 29th, 30th and June 1st. Sign up now. It, it's riseupcon.com. That's riseupcon.com. Go on now. You already see the wonderful faces and actors that you know that are also people that have done movies in the faith world. That That is amazing. We're going to have to talk about that. You're going to have I to come back and we'll talk there. more about that. You guys that. need to have a booth there. I, yeah, I'm thinking I want to be there as I'm hearing this. So we're going to have to check that out and uh, we'll have you back to talk more about it as we get closer to it. 
Appreciate you both coming on. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much.